What up everyone, Shaq here for EDM.com, and you know who this is. They are on the cusp of releasing their debut studio album, Thrive, on September 22nd, in an age chock full of it. The only good kind of slander. Derek Anderson, Scott Land, how's it going, guys? Hey, what's going on? Uh, guys, uh, I mean, we're busy. We're working down to the wire. We've got... People might be surprised. The debut studio album from Slander after a decade plus of churning out hits and hits. Um, how has it felt to finally be able to sit down? I know maybe right now it doesn't feel like it, but at the beginning, getting to sort of breathe and work on something cohesive because much like Nightmare, who we just published an interview with the other day, um, you guys have just kind of hit the ground running and kept running and kept running. What was it like to just sit back and be like, okay, let's work on this one thing for a while? Yeah, I think it was it was different. Um, I think the whole thing kind of started with it it was basically like our sound has changed so much over the years like since we started um it just never really made sense for us to do an album because we kept evolving so quickly with like the genres we were doing and what we were playing at shows and what we were making um so i think that was the main thing that hindered us from making an album in the first place but i think over the past basically like four or five years we finally have like settled into this place where we're really happy with the sound that we're making and the people that we're working with and you know the reactions have been good um and like the emotion kind of has the emotion of our sound has like the vibrational frequency of like what we're trying to say has like kind of just slowly but surely been like filtered down more and more and more over time of like us releasing singles and doing collaborations and i think for a long time that was it was like a search almost of like where what you know what is our sound you know i think you know when we started the project you know, we were just DJs first. And so a lot of people, you know, most of our peers, they were producers for eight to 10 years, you know, either working at home in their bedroom, you know, at their parents' house through high school. Um, and then, you know, their production start popping off and then they got to learn how to DJ and do the stage presence thing and learn how to perform and all that. And, um, you know, that's kind of nightmare story. And, um, for us, it was just, you know, the opposite of, of most of these guys. And so we were, you know, we were DJs first. And so I think when we fell into production, finally, you know, our DJ, you know, project kind of got, it, it capped itself that it's like, you know, this is how, this is how large our audience can be without making any music. And we needed to like, obviously learn how to produce and learn how to make music to to grow and continue this journey, I think we didn't have all of that time <laughs> to figure out what our, what we wanted to say and what we wanted to, you know, what it, what was our musical voice. Um, and I think for the past 10 years, we were just experimenting <laughs> and seeing what we liked and trying different things. And um, yeah, I think, now we finally landed on something and um you know the vocals and kind of the melodic bass kind of sound and then you know on this album we also wanted to like try something new just because we had so much space and so we have you know two techno songs on there and then there's like one kind of progressive house kind of track um on there and so yeah it was it was just interesting that you know obviously the pandemic gave us enough time and space to to really be like okay this is the moment we should do it finally and so it's interesting how you know you can turn kind of a negative moment into a positive if you you know put your head down and stuff and yeah we're really happy with how it turned out and yeah it's been a it's been a 
you know, obviously we've been working on the album for like over three years or so, but it's been this whole, this whole musical journey of all the singles and all the collabs and all of it is rolled into this moment. So what was it like for you guys? You know, um, obviously, as you're saying, DJs first in the production and came in, but assuming the information online is, is correct, you know, 2013, uh, 2014, excuse me, first proper release Ascensions, um, same year you got a Las Vegas residency. It just feels like um, when I talked to Nightmare about it, he was saying it was very therapeutic to just have this time to work on the album. How have you guys sort of, especially being a tandem, being able to rely on one another, kind of balanced the stress and the success of just, you know, release, 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 tour date, tour date, tour date. Uh, what's that process been like for you two together? Um, I think it's, you know, when we're performing, like we can lean on each other. And so I think that's super huge. Um, just because, you know, I've, we've both done like a couple solo shows over the course of this journey. And personally, I remember doing a show, you know, when Scott was having surgery. And I think it was like in, it was in Thailand a couple years ago. And it was like for, you know, 25,000 people. And I remember just getting up there and starting to play and really, really, I was like really, really high up away from the crowd. And um, I just felt completely alone. <laughs> and it was like not the best feeling <laughs> and um yeah it just it felt like I was just like on an island by myself just DJing for myself and and after that like I really had a lot of respect for like solo artists um you know playing in a club is one thing where the people are right there so it's like they're interacting with you you're having the relationship kind of feeling but I just remember playing on that massive stage where you know, the first person you can see in the front row is like their head is like this small, you know, and it's just like, yeah, I literally felt completely alone. And so I, I just felt that, you know, I, I really, really appreciate having Scott there and just having to have that, you know, emotional bond with someone of like, you know, when we do something that we enjoy, like we can look at each other and, you know, you always you just experience the moment like way deeper when you have that someone to connect with. And so I think the performing part, because we can lean on each other so much, like on the, like on the emotional level, um, I think that almost takes the burden off of performing a little bit more. Whereas like, I know a lot of producers, they like performing is like really hard for them and the traveling is really, really hard for them. Um, for me personally, the traveling and performing is the fun part. <laughs> and um, I just, I love, I love performing, especially with Scott. And um, yeah, it's just, that's the payoff for me of like all the music work. Um, so I think, yeah, having, having someone there to lean on when you're traveling, not only when you're traveling and when but actually when you're doing the performance, especially because our show is like very, very emotional heavy and like it does, like we're putting a lot of ourselves like on the table for the fans. Whereas like not to compare it to anyone specific, but it's like anyone who just like goes up there and just plays straight bangers. And there's no, no, like there's no like emotion. It's like, you're not, you're not opening yourself up so much every single time you perform and like giving that, like really um, like that little like sacred piece of emotion of yourself, like, you're putting it out there for people to judge and um for us you know every single show we do that and so i could imagine you know you know without the other person it would be a lot more like emotionally draining and and obviously when we first started touring just having each other like before we had like our team and we were traveling with all of our people um just traveling with each other and not having to be like alone on the road like you know we've heard many many stories of our friends and just you know when you're starting out just being alone for countless hours in airports and hotel rooms and then you know and then you're just in front of people for an hour and then it's a, you know alone again like we always have had each other to kind of lean on and I think that's that's always been a big part of our us being able to like keep up this output I feel oh, what was that yeah. still experience like for you um I, I mean, I, I felt very similarly to how Derek felt. Um, I, I think I've played like maybe two shows 
without Derek, and they were kind of separate. One was in a different country. It was in Korea. Uh, and then the other one was actually in the United States. And there, it's just, it's so weird I, because DJing from a technical standpoint is not a very difficult thing to do, right? Like, especially with the CDJs and the technology that there is now. Um, but the way that Derek and I perform, I feel like that is one of the things that makes us very unique like compared to other acts that people have the ability to go and see. And um, going off of what Derek said earlier, there's something about our shows and our fans where um, I think that the two of us being there on stage, showing vulnerability, it also allows our fans to go to be vulnerable and feel comfortable being vulnerable also. And it's like when you see two men standing on stage singing along to a song that you normally maybe wouldn't see like grown men singing to, right? And they're seeing that, right? The spotlight is on us per se. Then it's like a reflection of like that they could also do that with us, right? And I think that that connection that we've built over the last decade or so with our fans that's kind of what makes our show special. And I think that that is also the thing that Derek and I have realized over time that people, the majority of people really do come to our show to experience. And um, I think that that kind of ties back to the album with these vocals being very, like, you know, a very pronounced and strong part of like what our sound is now. Um, and I don't know, something that I really appreciate, but you know, I, like I said, I, I that that is the thing that whenever I don't have Derek, the, the handful of shows that I played without him, it's like feeling that openness with the with the crowd. It doesn't seem to be there as much because like anyone can go up there and stand on stage and like sing along to the lyrics, right? But there's this like X factor that comes in when like it's not just one person that people like are feeling connected to, but it's two, mm -hmm. right? Like it's double, it's, it's double the amount, right? It's inspiring like this. Okay. This group is doing the same thing together. And now I could feel like I'm a part of it. You know what I mean? That's, wow. and, and I think that that makes it a little bit more unique. Oh, I was us. right there with you guys at Sean singing my heart out. <laughs> um, <Yeah. laughs> you know what? This is, this actually, you know, getting to, you guys are so forthcoming and open about sort of the emotional notes of uh, your creative process, your friendship. So this ties in, this all makes more sense to me because uh, Thrive isn't just an album. There is a narrative component to it, right? It's a cosmic love story about an astronaut searching for somewhere to start anew, but still kind of longing for this love back on Earth. What sort of went into uh, painting a narrative to go along with the musical production? Um, basically we just like have worked with our visual artist Roboto for like almost seven years now. And, um, yeah, he is just, you know, one of the most hardworking, most talented people that I know and definitely consider him like one of my mentors. And, um, you know, he's worked with tons of way bigger artists than us. And, um, yeah, like this story kind of came about with him and, we we basically just sat down a, it was probably like five or six years ago and we're just we our visual brand was just not really defined at that point and we kind of just decided that you know we were really big fans of sci-fi like as kids and stuff and that kind of is where we wanted to paint the picture for for slander and so it led into this this story with the with the space man and um you know, he's kind of like in the slightly, he starts off in like the near future and he's basically gets sent out to kind of find like new life and find like a new home for, for humans or he's, he's just searching and it's, it's a little vague. Um, and we want people to be able to like put their own story into it. Um, but that's kind of the rough, like what you said is like the rough narrative of just, there's, he's out there looking for a new home but then obviously during his journey he's 
you know, having flashbacks of home, flashbacks of the, like his past relationships. And then he actually does, you know, in the walk and water music video, he does get found by his love interest. Finally, he's like, just basically floating in space. He's like almost dead. And then she finds him and brings him back to life and like heals him. And then he goes out and like basically fights this, like, um, it's like this overarching, like enemy, um, like, it's like an energy force basically. And so, and then he actually defeats them and then he finds himself like in this new planet and then it kind of ends again. Um, but yeah, that's kind of the visual story that the album lives in. But I think all of the songs are basically representing um, these flashbacks that he's having of his past relationship and things he's thinking about while he's floating through <laughs> the void. And um, yeah, I think it's, like it's 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 kind of like the album is a life cycle of a relationship also so it's it kind of has a couple different meanings um but yeah we're super excited like that the walk on water music video finally came out and it's kind of like a somewhat finisher of the story and um yeah we have like you know lots of new visuals for our show that are like based from that and all that so yeah I was gonna say two wonder first of all wonderful segue I hate to take away from it um on the love story note first time will be uh one of our wedding songs next summer oh, so that's amazing man. yeah you guys you guys are gonna with the much love, love. Story stuff. yes yes <laughs> July twenty second you guys are around um and secondly the live show that's perfect um what are some of the plans as far as you can sh uh, share in terms of translating this narrative into the live production with the visuals with the lighting sequences all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, we have like a whole new visual package that we made for this tour that's just uh, way more cohesive, I feel, and um, just kind of tells more bits and pieces of the story. And, you know, we're bringing the eye for this tour run and um, we haven't like advertised it so much because we kind of wanted people just to come and see what we had in store. But, um, you know, the eye tour got cut short in 2020 and we really only got to do a couple of the makeup dates last year. So we really felt that there was still a lot of people who were asking to see it, who hadn't see it, seen it at all. And a lot of like major, major cities that we haven't gone to, you know, haven't experienced the show. So we just felt like we really just need to hammer it and get it to the people. And, um, and then maybe next year we'll, we'll do something new. But we're really, really excited to finally like bring the eye to all these different places and many places that we weren't even planning on bringing it before. And now that we have a little more resources and stuff. So that part is really exciting, too, because the last I tour was supposed to be like 15 dates. And then this one's like 31 or 33 dates or whatever. And so that's just incredible to me because the eye was always like for many, many years, like kind of our final vision for the show. And so to be able to now bring it to like twice as many places is just the biggest blessing. And, you know, we're so grateful to our fans to like allow us to be able to do this and bring this level of experience um, with our show. And like with always with our show, too, it's like we're going to be hitting the big songs and all that. But I think, yeah, it definitely because it's the album tour it gives us like a little more leeway to lean into the album and um play some newer stuff too so right. sorry for whatever construction's going on outside there uh guys i i do want to end on a little bit of rapid fire i know my time is coming up just to get to know you two a little better are you ready for this all right all sure. right we'll, we'll keep these short nothing too crazy uh what is your partner's greatest non-musical related skill um i would say Scott has two skills that is not related to music. And one is playing Smash Bros. And then one is ping pong. <laughs> yeah. We are on the same wavelength here. Who's your, oh, your really? okay. particular character you like to use, Scott? Um, recently, it's been K. Rule. I've been loving K. Rule. Um, but I would say that, like, t Smash Bros. has always been something that I've prided myself on being, like, good at over the years but as time has gone on i've played significantly less and i would say that now especially as like 
Ultimate has been out and more people have gotten better at it and have played it more, it's not something that I am the first to talk smack in anymore. Um, that is not, uh, it's, it's not, yeah. Like, I love saying that I'm good at Smash Bros, but I wouldn't like, I'm not like openly like, oh, I'm so good at Smash Bros. You know what I mean? But in table tennis, it's a different story. In table tennis. Okay. In table tennis, I am very confident in my abilities and I would challenge anyone electronic dance music to a table tennis match. I'm very confident in that. Okay, okay. I like I, I, I do I do have one coming up. I, I guess I'm gonna play Wookie uh when when we hit Denver and so I'll let you guys know how that goes. Yeah, we gotta get a live stream going and do a whole circuit while you guys are touring together. Uh Scott, what are your what are Derek's greatest non music skills? Um, I think that one of them ha that would be interesting for fans to uh, to hear about is that Derek um, and Derek is a very close relationship with his grandparents who live in uh, in Maui, and Derek is a very avid uh, kite surfer. So Sick. that yeah, and um, I I always found that very interesting, um, especially when I met Derek back in the day. Um, and I thought that that was something that like you normally wouldn't like, it, it's a harder, it's a harder sport to kind of, I feel like get interested in, like you have to be close to the right environment where like, that is something that not only people are interested in doing and are doing, you know, very actively, but, um, also it's just not that common of, of a sport to get into. Um, so when I heard that Derek was doing that a lot I was, and I was like wow that's actually really cool and that's very unique also I can't see myself doing it well maybe in the future but like at least initially you know it's it I'd be kind of scared that I'd be taken away by the winds and just be flying out there by myself and just dangling like oh no <laughs> and then my fear I don't whatever is the fear of like being in deep ocean with like not mm -hmm. seeing land around you I do have whatever that phobia is yeah. No, yeah. Not a strong swimmer over here. I sometimes I float too far out. I just ask the fiance, hey, can you jump in and push me back to shore? I don't really feel like going through it. Yeah, exactly. I'm around that. It's, we're we're same wavelength for that too. All right, last <laughs> thing, guys, I'll let you go here. Your partner is having a bad day. What's the cure? Food, activities, pep talk, whatever. Derek first. <laughs> <laughs> um Yeah, I feel like just some nice warm McDonald's would be Scott's Scott's happy meal. <laughs> pun intended. <laughs> yes, yes, pun intended. I'm sure. Um, God, what would be my if Derek? If Derek is, I will say this: out of out of all the time that we've spent traveling together, um, there it's been a very rare occurrence that we actually. I feel like get in each other like get like like we're always there to help each other that's like the whole reason that we do this and i'm not trying to like avoid the question at all uh, i'm just saying that i feel like emotionally um you know I, I emotionally derek and i i was always have always been good about being there for each other right you know, i know that sometimes derek needs space derek knows that sometimes i need space and um you know in the beginning like first maybe three four years there were a lot of times where, um, you know, it was just Derek, myself, and maybe like one other person that we could afford to bring along with us. And now um, we have an entire team. And obviously, as you, we grow the team, there's different dynamics uh, that each one of us have with each other. And, the, and, and, you know, it's not just Derek and I that are going through like the traveling or whatever. And um, there's more assistance, so to speak, with that. But um, I think going back to like the original question, if I were to answer it, like, I just know that if Derek, you know, Derek just sometimes needs space. And I think that that's, that's kind of like the beauty of it. It's, he doesn't need one specific thing to like make him feel better, so to speak. But um, it's like, we can both recalibrate pretty well on our own because we know that it's best for us. I love that. Look at that, guys. Uh, man, yeah. it's been so excellent talking to you two today. I can tell you firsthand, 
go check out Slander on tour. You will be singing your heart out. Your friend will knock your phone out of your hands when you're up there trying to film good vibrations. It's bound to happen. <laughs> Everyone's having too much fun. Guys, I want to leave you with the last word. I'll do my part very, very quickly. Thanks so much for checking out the video, everyone. If you're still here, you know what you got to do. Subscribe, thumbs up, hit the notification bell. Let us know in the comment. What is your favorite song off the new album, Thrive? Coming up September 22nd, little birthday present to myself. Derek Anderson, Scott Land Slander. If there's anything you want to let the people know, please let them know. We love you guys so much, and we're just so grateful for all your support over the years. We wouldn't be here without you. We literally do this for you, and we hope you guys can come to the tour and see the show, and we hope you guys enjoy the album. And, yeah, just thanks for being there for us on this journey, and um, especially through the pandemic and everything. It really, really means the world to us, and we love you.